Hello everyone, welcome back to Machine Organization and Programming. This is part three of this week's lecture material. Uh, today we're going to be talking about binary arithmetic. This is from section 2.3 of the Computer Systems textbook. Uh, just a heads up, we're not going to be doing the floating point version in 2.4. Um, I don't really feel like you learn, obviously you're going to learn more if you read that section. I found it fascinating. But what we'll see is that the patterns are going to be the same. We're representing numbers in binary. Uh, we'll, we're going to talk about all the integers. To represent a floating point number in binary, we need to choose some of the bits to be the sign, some to represent the mantissa, and some to represent the exponent. And then we've got to do a bunch of manipulations to do math with them. So anyway, read that section if you're interested. Uh, we're going to focus on just the integer uh, decimal values for um, this course. Um, and in particular, this section has some really great practice problems at the end. I highly recommend that after you're done uh, going through this lecture, uh, then read the textbook. And again, this is one of those examples where the textbook has lots of math formulas. That, And, and to be honest, those formulas are all great, um, but they, in my opinion, they overly complicate something that's just not really all that hard. So I hope my introduction here helps make uh, this make a lot of sense. And when you get to those formulas, you can say, oh, this is just doing some actually pretty simple process, even though it's a complicated looking formula. But um, when you get done with that section, definitely take a look at problem 29. Make sure you can do at least that one. All right, um, but but look at all of them. Don't just don't just stop at 29. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with binary arithmetic. All right, guys. So the first topic for today is um, addition and subtraction in binary or arithmetic in general. So I just came back over here to a um, this is just a text file opened up in Vim. I thought this might be. Uh, the easiest way to do this because I can like walk through the process and point at specific things with my bold green cursor rather than just making a bunch of PowerPoint slides and using the mouse to circle what I'm talking about. I can actually do this live. Um, I hope this is useful. Let me know if you prefer this to um, PowerPoint. We can put together the best possible presentation for next year. Okay, so I'm considering a 3-bit machine just to keep this simple as possible. This is going to be using two's complement representation for negative integers. But the first thing that I want to do is talk about addition of unsigned numbers. So uh, I'm looking at 3 plus 1 okay, in binary. So this is binary arithmetic. So 3 is going to be 0, 1, 1 on a 3-bit machine. So 1 plus 2 equals 3. And uh, 1, whoops, that is the problem doing it live, is going to be 0, 0, 1. So when I go through and do my uh, addition here, the first thing I'm going to do is fill this in with spaces so I can use the arrow keys. So the uh, B0 position, 1 plus 1 is 2, right? Except the binary doesn't have a 2. So what I'm going to do instead is just like I would do with decimal addition, I'm going to put in uh, a carry. So 2 is going to become 1, 0 in binary. So I'm going to stick a 0 there. And then up here in this row, in the B1 position, I'm going to carry a 1. <clears throat> and I've got the same thing here. I've got 1 plus 1 plus 0 is going to be a um, 2. So that's going to be represented as 1, 0. I'm going to come back up here. 2 is going to be 1, 0. So I'm going to carry a 1 into that position. And then when I come down here, place that with a 1. Oops, oops, oops. Let me make this look good. I'm failing with the typing. OK, there we go. 1, 0, 0. So um, 1, 0, 0 is actually equivalent to 4 when we convert it back to decimal, which is exactly what we would get with the 3 plus 1. So uh, the whole point of this problem was to demonstrate uh, carrying, just like we'd see in decimal, but in binary. All right, so my next example here, 5 plus 3, is going to be a demonstration of what happens. Uh, it's, it's called overflow, when we create a number that's too big. So please remember in 3 bits, when I'm using unsigned numbers, I'm allowed to represent 0 through 7. Those are the, 7 is the largest number I'm going to be able to represent uh, binarily 1, 1, 1. So what happens when I get a number that's too big? So 5 plus 3 is 8. And let me just uh, write this over here. 5, there we go, 5 plus 3. And in binary, 5 is going to be 4 plus, no, 2 is plus 1. And 3 is going to be just like I had up above, 0, 1, 1. So when I do this addition, there we go. I know the answer is going to be 8. Um, let's see here. 
So let me just walk through this. One plus one is uh, two, which is going to be zero, carry the one. And then one plus here, one is going to also be two. So I get a zero, carry the one. My mind keep you type. All right, one plus one again is going to be zero, carry the one. And then I'm just going to carry this down. The problem is that I only get um, three bits to represent this. And so what happens is that I keep the smallest three, the least three least significant bits. So when I store this in memory, this is going to become um, just 0, 0, 0, which is going to be 0 instead of 8. So here, check this out. I just real quick filled in all the possible numbers for unsigned uh, integers with 3 bits. And what I'm seeing here is I started with 5. I added 3 to it, so 1, 2, 3. But what happens is it wraps around. So if I were to do any of these, it's sort of like taking the modulus of the answer based on how many digits I get. And because I have overflowed how many bits I get at the end to represent my final answer, this sort of, uh, I, I want to call it a mistake, but this is just how it's going to work, it is known as um, overflow. This is actually pretty common to see on machines. If you're doing like, if I'm using an integer or a small to represent a number that's just straight up not big enough to hold the result of my computation, like if I'm looking at the Fibonacci sequence or a factorial type problem where the, the results get very big after just a few iterations of those algorithms, um, this overflow problem is quite big. All right, and a great way to test to see if overflow has occurred is to just take a look at your two numbers. Um, so in this case, I've got five and three and your answer. If I add any two numbers together and the answer is smaller than the larger of those two numbers, then overflow has occurred and I no longer have the correct answer because I've lost some um, of the more significant bits. All right, so a quick way to test for overflow. All right, so subtraction is going to work the same way whether we're using signed or unsigned uh, numbers. So, but I wanted to just real quick do um, an example uh, with uh, something that would work with either. So sign subtraction. So in this case, um, I'm looking at two take away one and two in binary with three bits is going to be zero one zero and take away one is going to be zero zero one. So the first thing I'm going to do is just like in decimal, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, zero, take away one. I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow from this, the next decimal place over. So in this case, this is going to become a zero. Here, let me actually leave the number there and just right up at the top. This is going to become a zero, oops, right there, a zero, and this will become a two. Now I can think about it like that while I'm doing the math. So now I can say two take away one is just going to be one. And then I'm going to make zero take away zero is going to be zero. And zero take away zero is going to be zero. Make the numbers all line up. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm borrowing from the, the two's position here and uh, turning this zero into a two for the subtraction so that I've got something to actually subtract from. Because I uh, need to be able to take from a larger digit in order to get a meaningful answer right here. So hopefully this um, subtraction worked. This is, would be an example that would work for either signed or unsigned numbers here. So the next example I want to do, I want to look at signed addition uh, a little bit differently. Um, this is a, technically a subtraction problem. But what I've done here is taken my subtract one and turned it into an addition of negative one. So you check this out. This is going to be how this works. So let's see here. Um, I've got two again minus one we'll just write it like that um so this is going to be two it's still going to be zero one zero i need to fix my vim rc so it stops auto filling that in and not letting me just keep typing i haven't done that yet on my own machine okay so take away minus one let me just uh, make a note real quick here the minus one i'm going to do this in a couple of steps if it were positive it would be zero zero one in two's complement to uh, switch from Uh, positive to a negative, I'm going to first take the ones complement, so zero, zero, whoops, so the zero turns into one, the zero turns into one, and the one turns into a zero. So that's how ones complement works. Uh, make a note right here, ones complement, and then I'm going to add one. So 
uh, plus one is going to be zero zero one, and then the result of that. So I'm looking at the second line here. Zero plus one is going to be one. One plus zero is going to be one, and one plus zero is one. All right. So negative one in two's complement representation one one one. Here, one sec. Let me write out all of these, and I'll just but I have the whole chart available for uh, reference. All right, so just for quick reference, um, the very first here, bit here is going to represent the sign, but it's a little more complicated than that. But anyway, if it's zero, we're just going to get the normal positive numbers that we'd see for sign magnitude, for unsigned magnitude. Okay, but if this bit is a one, the uh, formula we use would be to take the uh, negative of the two to whatever power this is. In this case, uh, zero, one, two. So negative two squared, because it's the B2 position, so I'm raised to the two power. So it's gonna be minus four, take away, um, oh, minus four plus uh, zero times two to the first times zero times two to the zero power. So that just gives me minus four. And this is gonna result in a pattern where the very bottom number, the one, 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 all ones position is gonna be minus one, and then it just counts down from there, minus two, minus three, minus four. Um, okay, so easy way to remember this if we're looking at uh, small numbers, at least. Uh, for larger numbers, go ahead, just grab that formula to, to do the conversion if you need to go from binary to decimal. All right, um, otherwise, uh, two's complement representation means just uh, we take the one's complement and then add one to it. Those are the two steps we need. All right, so now back to signed addition here. So I'm taking two plus negative one. So I've got two here is zero, one, zero. Negative one in two's complement is one, one, one. So now I'm just gonna finish this problem up. When I add these numbers together, uh, zero plus one is gonna be one. And then one plus one is going to be two. So I need to do that carry thing. So I'm gonna get a zero here and a one here. One plus one is two. So I'm going to also see the carrying issue, 0 and then 1 right there. And when I take 1 plus 0 plus 0, essentially, I'm going to get a 1 right there. And now I only get 3 bits. So this is actually going to be stored as 0, 0, 1. So we see that this same problem, 2 plus negative 1, also is going to give us the exact same answer, 0, 0, 1, just like we'd expect. 2 take away 1 is 1. Um, but it did this by overflowing the... Um, that uh, fourth position there. So that's not available for us to store a number in. So uh, subtraction with the uh, signed integer still works just the same, whether I'm like just doing regular subtraction or I convert to a positive, uh, convert to a negative number and then add them together. Um, they work the same. All right, uh, one more slightly more complicated example is gonna be a problem where I um, am subtracting and end up with a negative number. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. All right, so I'm going to take two, take away, oh, insert mode, take away three. So in binary, two is going to be, let's see, zero, one, zero, and minus three. I'm just going to look at my chart right here since I already did all the work. It's going to be, oh, let's do it with regular, regular three, zero, one, one. And we'll just do some subtraction here. So as I go through this, I'm gonna need a line for carrying and borrowing, or let's see, whatever it's called. So um, I'm taking zero, take away one. What I'm gonna get here is uh, I need to, to um, I'm borrowing. So my one zero is gonna turn into a zero and a two. Okay, and when I do that, two take away one is gonna be one, no problem. All right, now I run into a problem here because I've technically got zero, take away one again and I would just normally borrow from this position right here, but there isn't anything. So instead, what I'm gonna do is jump over here to this imaginary fourth position. There's nothing there. Um, technically, it'd be zeros all the way out for two, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow from this imaginary missing bit right here and just pretend that it works. So this is gonna become a two right here, and I'm gonna borrow from that position. So maybe one more line up here. This is the, this represents my first level of borrowing. And then up here, what I'm gonna end up with is a one and a two. Let me think, did I do that right? Because I'm borrowing from this position, so that becomes a two. 
and then I'm borrowing from that position, so that becomes a 1, and this becomes a 2. All right, and then, yep, 2, take away that one right there from the minus 3 line is going to be a 1, and then 1, take away 0, is going to be a 1, and, oops, oops, messing up here, uh, 1, 1, 1 in binary is minus 1 for negative 2's complement representation, which is exactly what we'd expect if we take 2, take away 3. So the trick here was that I needed to borrow from this imaginary, um, let me, uh, I'm hesitant to do this, but if I stick in a, could be could be 0, could be 1, I'm borrowing from this, this piece right here that's not actually there. I'm going to take out my question mark in just a second to leave it so that when I post this on the canvas, it, it looks normal. Um, so it's not confusing for people who are looking at this document first. So there, take that out. Okay, but anyway, so the, the trick here was that I had to borrow from this imaginary fourth bit position that doesn't exist. All right, uh, one more example, and then I'm going to wrap up addition. All right, so the next problem I'm going to be looking at is negative 2, take away 3. Um, the answer here is going to be minus 5. But here's the, the problem and the challenge. The reason I chose this particular problem is we don't actually have a minus 5 that we can represent. So just what happens here, uh, this is a problem known as underflow. And here's the idea. Okay, so I've got negative 2. I'm going to be subtracting 3 from it. So if I go over here, negative 2. I'm just going to grab this from my chart. It's 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 0. And then I'm going to be subtracting 3. So I'm going to go ahead with the positive 3, 0, 1, 1. We'll do some subtraction. Come on, insert mode. Nope. Insert mode. Okay, um, 1, 1. Whoops, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so doing some subtraction here. So what I've got is I'm going to be borrowing for this first piece because 0 take away 1, I can't do that, I need to borrow. So I need to turn this into... Insert mode, come on, Mike. Uh, zero, I'm going to borrow from that. That'll be a two. Man, i got to fix the VimRC, make this easier to type. Okay, two take away one is going to be one. There we go. All right, and then same problem here. I've got zero take away one is going to be, um, yep, I need to borrow again. So let me add another line here. And I'm going to borrow from this position, so that'll become a zero. This will become a two. Now I'm going to take 2, take away 1 here, and that's equal to 1. And now I've got 0, take away 0, so that's going to be 0. And now in the end, uh, I do not get here, 0, 1, 1. The first bit 0 tells me it's going to be a positive number, and in fact, uh, it's going to be positive 3. I can either look at my chart up here, or I can just say 1 plus 2 is 3. Um, and negative 2, take away 3, is negative 5. It is not 3. But here's what happened. I've um, underflowed this, so there is no negative 5. So basically, uh, I started with I started with minus 2 right here. I'm subtracting 3, so that's basically like counting up 3 positions, 1, 2, 3. I ended up with a positive number, even though my answer should be negative. I just don't have enough bits to represent that negative number. So uh, negative 5, I would require 4 bits. All right, so that's going to wrap up uh, arithmetic. If you guys have any questions, post them on Piazza. If you want to see another example or something, uh, you can propose that, and I'll go ahead and do it in the solution box.